What's up guys, this is Justin Johnson. In this particular video, I'm gonna be talking about some of the strategies I use to take the guitar tone that you have and make it bigger and better. So basically I use two pedals to accomplish this. I use a compression pedal to make it sound bigger. The other pedal is an EQ pedal. So let's dig in and I'm basically gonna walk you through how I would set up my tone. I'm gonna to get my tone the way I like it without the, without the compression and the EQ. And then I'm gonna add the EQ and then I'm gonna add the compression and basically walk you through what I'm thinking when I'm doing this. All right, so first off, let me tell you a little bit about the tone that I'm getting just naturally anyways. So I'm starting with my guitar right here. This is a Gyrock guitar from Wild Customs. It's got a, um, like a vintage Seymour Duncan uh, Strat style pickup. It's a single coil. I'm going with the neck pickup right here. I'm sending that through the uh, J-Rocket Archer pedal just to give it a little bit of dirt, a little bit of overdrive. And then I'm sending that to the Fender Princeton amp over here, which is just, you know, good Fender clean tone, a little bit of reverb. So let me let you listen to what it sounds like, just like that. All right, so that sounds pretty good. It's really close to what I'm hearing in my head, but there's still, you know, it still sounds a little weak, especially on some of those sustained notes, in my opinion. Like when I'm trying to hold out a single note, I like the attack, but it kind of dies out a, a little bit before I want it to. Also, I feel like, um, which is common a lot of times when you get a little overdriven with the guitar, some of the wound strings, like the lower strings, start blending together and there's not quite as much definition in those low strings as I want. So let me go through uh, with the EQ pedal and the compressor pedal and let's start turning some knobs and getting this tone to sound even better. All right, so the uh, EQ and the compression pedal that I'm using are both from a company called API and they just uh, released these pedals. They sent them out to me a couple months ago. I'm gonna start with the EQ over here. Okay, so one of the first things I'll do is, is try to clear up any murkiness that might be in the low frequencies. And what I like to do is to play like, you know, some three note chords um, basically with the bass strings, because I want to hear, uh, I want good body in the bass, but I, I don't want it to get muddy, so I want to hear good definition. So let me try to thin out or thicken up the bass right now. So you can hear already um, how much of a difference that makes in how clear those bass notes come across. Here's without the pedal. Here's with the pedal on. You hear how that still has the uh, body to it, but the clarity comes, and that comes from a cut. That's an important thing to understand is you don't just boost the signal to hear more. A lot of times it's gonna be way better sounding if you cut back a frequency, and um, if things get quieter, you can always boost the gain at the end to match that volume. Okay, so next I'm gonna do treble, and I like to do bass and then treble, um, and then I'll finish up with the mids. So when I'm testing the treble, I like to basically hit the highest notes that I'm planning on playing, hit them nice and hard. Basically, you wanna do the most trebly, kind of like loud trebly thing you can do because you wanna test where the limits of that treble are. And if it sounds kind of annoying or harsh when you hear it, you can dial that treble back. I actually like where that treble's at right now, but let me turn it up and let me turn it down and let you hear what, it, uh, what it's actually sounding like when you uh, change that treble knob. So let me uh, turn it up first. Now let me turn that uh, treble down and uh, I'll be doing a treble cut at this point. Yeah, 
you hear what a big difference there was even with that small boost compared to that small cut um, it really affected the attack of the note specifically you know when that pick is first hitting the note and then also the way those high notes kind of carry and sustain I actually liked it with a little bit of a boost but maybe I'll do uh, just a hair right there so that's in the middle and I'm just gonna boost it up just a tiny bit to get a little more definition out of it <laughs> Let's move on to the middle right now and uh, with this pedal again I'm controlling basically around the 1.5 kilohertz range and I'm going to put down the pick and play with my fingers with this one because again I want to hear basically the attack and, and when you're playing with your fingers you get a softer attack than the pick so I want to bring out that soft attack. All right here I'm going to go without any boost or cut in the mids so you can hear it. <laughs> Sounds good. Let me boost it up a little bit. All right, so I've got everything pretty much where I want it, but I'm going to go through uh, while playing and just sort of tweak everything one last time, make sure everything is exactly, uh, exactly in place. Alright, so we got everything dialed in on the EQ pedal, and so let's move over to the compression pedal right now. Basically, the simplest concept behind what, what a compression pedal does is it takes the dynamic range, which is the range between your softest and your loudest notes uh, when you're playing, and it basically tries to lower that. All of those quiet notes start to sound a little louder. Um, the difference between the loudest and softest notes starts to become less and everything sounds a little closer. The ambience of it sounds a little bit bigger. Uh, the body of it sounds fuller, and notes like single notes sustain longer. All right, so the first knob I'm gonna start turning is the sustain knob, and that is basically what it says. You know, the way you're gonna perceive the difference when you hear this is that it's gonna sound like the notes are sustaining more. I think one of the best ways to hear what the compressor's doing is uh, when I play the slide guitar, because when I hold on to a note with the slide, I want it to sustain as long as possible, and you can really hear what the compressor's doing when I do that. So let me start with that sustain low, and then I'm going to raise it. I'm going to keep playing the same riff, and you can hear the sustain just kind of grab on and keep, keep lingering. <laughs> So not only can you hear a, a difference in how that fundamental uh, like foundational note kind of continues to carry on like its body through that through that slide line but you also can hear a difference in the tone so when the sustains lower you have more of your natural guitar tone and your natural guitar attack because less is being done to the actual signal there so as you turn that sustain up you start getting a much more flat a less dynamic tone but you get more sustain. And so the whole key is finding that balance between getting all the best features of this compressor without like just squashing your tone and totally killing all the dynamic range in it. It's also important to go into this knowing what kind of effect you're trying to get, especially from the compression. Because when you use the EQ, I think you, you know, basically you, you can get the EQ set and leave that on most of the time once you're happy with your tone. 
But with the compressor, what I specifically like to do is set that for my lead guitar tone to make those single notes really just like sing. You know, I want it to sound vocal and I want that sustain. So I'm going to start uh, basically playing some riffs, adjusting that sustain and getting the kind of balance between tone and, and body that I'm really looking for from the compressor. So let's go to the next uh, setting on here, and that's basically the attack setting. Some compressor uh, pedals have knobs, some have switches. I like the simplicity of this. Basically, you have slow and fast, and that's generally the concept. You either want a fast attack or a slow attack on the compressor. I'm going to start off with a fast attack setting, and this is going to sort of like round off uh, the notes when I, when I pluck them. Right now I'm going to go to a slow attack and you should be able to hear more of the initial impact and authority of those notes. I think I'm actually liking the way that the fast setting sounds. I like how it's it's kind of taking some of that shrill nature out of the attack of the note. You know, I want the note to be, like I said, like vocal, and I think it has more of a vocal quality with that sort of roundness to the attack. All right, so the next setting is release, and it's, it's a lot like attack, uh, but it's actually how long it takes the uh, compressor to rebound. So after it lowers the volume level, when it hits that uh, those loud notes, it basically will either come back in slowly or come back in very quickly. And what you should do when you're setting this setting is basically play some of your more active uh, playing, whatever it is you're going to be doing, whatever song you're going to be playing or style you're going to be playing in. Play like some of the more active parts and just listen to which one feels better. What you don't want is you don't want to really hear the compressor like pumping and you don't want to hear those volume changes. Sometimes depending on the tempo of the song or how much compression you're, you're pushing, you can hear it kind of like breathing and uh, it, it kind of throws it off. It doesn't sound uniform. So you just kind of listen for that. Pick the setting that you like better. That was fast, this is slow. I think I like that fast setting, you know, it, get, it keeps the body of that rhythm going and uh, sounds uh, a little bigger and, you know, that's the point of the compressor really for me. All right, the next knob is my favorite knob on this and um, it's not on all compressors, but it's one of my favorite things that they included on this particular compressor pedal is the blend knob. And so what's so great about that is, um, you know, like I said at the beginning when I was talking about the compressor, you're, you're making the sound sound bigger, but what you're doing also literally is kind of squashing that dynamic range. But the dynamic range and, and like having that full range of dynamic is part of what gives it that, that bite to it, part of what gives it that articulation. And so when you can actually blend between the fully compressed wet signal and the non-compressed dry signal, 
it gives you this great uh, tonal control. So basically you can start to uh, dial that knob back and you can hear the tone just kind of open up because you're going back to that raw signal that's totally just dynamic. It's totally got those highs and lows. But in that sweet spot, you've got all the articulation and the clarity from that dry signal, but you've got the sustain and you've got that body and you've got that, that mass, you know, uh, from the compressor. So again, I'm gonna play some riffs, turn the knob, uh, play some more and try to dial in that sweet spot. I'm at about 50% with that blend knob and I'm loving it. It gives me the, the attack that I want when you first hit that note. It also gives you that nice long sustain. Listen to that sustain. Man, I love it. All right, so now that we've got the compressor set and the EQ set, let's do a little A-B test and uh, basically hear the difference from where we started before the EQ and compressor and where we ended up now. Man, what a difference there, uh, both with how you can hear the bass and you can hear the high notes, you can hear everything kind of uh, balanced, but you also just get so much more body, so much more uh, girth, you know, to the tone. And when you hear that like low note, you can still hear that low E held out nice and full, but the uh, presence that the lead has with the compressed and EQ'd version to me is so much more and uh, it helps me play better, you know, when I have that kind of tone, when I have the sustain that I want, and the guitar and the amp and everything is responding the way that I want it to, it allows me to just play and stop struggling to kind of like force more tone out of the guitar. 
And like I said before, too, you know, a lot of times I'll use the EQ on both lead and rhythm, but I might not use the compression on rhythm guitar. I might save the compression for when I want to kick into the lead guitar, and I might give myself a little boost on the output, maybe boost the uh, volume up and boost that compression up so that you really feel that presence change when you go into that lead guitar solo. I think sometimes as a guitarist, you know, you have that, that lead guitar kind of tone in your head and it's not just like distortion. Basically what I think a lot of guitarists like about overdrive or distortion is the fact that it compresses your tone. What you're really craving is compression, but you start reaching for those overdrive pedals and you basically start just like saturating your tone with overdrive and you, you kind of lose a lot of your tone that way. What's nice about the compressor is that it just gives you more of what you already have. It doesn't really change it a whole lot. And so that's the whole key behind the compression, I think specifically, when it comes to really getting that nice lead guitar tone. All right, guys, have fun and see you next time.